Good, 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 good. Yes. Welcome back to the stream. My name's Twice. This is Ace Attorney. We're trying to get through as much as Ace Attorney as we can this week um, to clear the way for a new bonus game, not bonus weekend stream game soon enough. Um, and we're killing a little time until uh, Fire Emblem comes out on Friday, which we will have a stream for, so I'm really looking forward to it. Engage looks like it's going to be heavy on the tactic side, and I'm okay with that. I think both sides can be appeased. The uh, team building aspect and then the actual tactics aspect. Twenty-seven months. That's pretty wild. Every time you subscribe, Pirate, I lose hair. <laughs> I just... Whew, it's gone. Again. Thank you. Thanks for being the OG and hanging. Really appreciate it. All right, this is the front, and we're not, we're still trying to find this engineer, but we're instead working on other leads. Dr. Scythe? Sith? Sith or Scythe? And there's nothing here that I can really look at. Well, I mean, there's plenty I can look at, but there's nothing that, well, let's, let's peek around, you know? It's not really breaking and entering if I didn't actually break anything. It's just entering, which last I checked, not a crime. Various equipment supplies, da da da. One entry seems rather strange, oh. Huh? 500 scalpels every month. Oof. That's weird. But I also don't know what you'd need them for. It's not like it's... It's so odd. They all, like, make Wolverine gloves or something? Is that the... <laughs> the dirty secret of the lab? autopsy report. So we're dealing with this case, but then we've got about six other things that are big, confusing, and all swirling around. I don't think I've ever had that in the Ace Attorney games, other than maybe Investigations 2. Like, and even then, this is tied through both games. It's really impressive to me. As long as they stick the landing, which I expect they will, just based on everyone's opinion of this. Like, okay, we've got the Hound of the Baskervilles, right? That has ties to... Case number five with the pawnbroker. And then also both case number four and six. Which are... four and six are tied together. They happen right next to each other, timeline-wise. But there was loot with the convict... That was a big dog collar with a B on it. So if that's not Baskervilles, I don't know what is. We've got the Professor killings, which changed Barrack Von Zeke's. Professor is tied, just been introduced in this case. We've got everything with Kazuma, who isn't dead now, maybe? Never was, which has ties to, you know, case number two, where he died. And also... Like, Sholm's lying on us. Lying. <laughs> no. Not that lucky. Lying to us. Um, we've got the list of names that happened in case number five that tied to Kazuma and a few others. 
Like, Kazuma has something that he needs to do, but we don't know what it is. And now he's tied to all this. Case number five ties in with that again. And case number three, which is where the original uh, sale of that was happening. And then we've got Giselle Brett, whose name was actually A. Shin. Don't know what the actual first name is, so we just say A. Shin. Which has ties to case number... One and six. Oh, sorry, four and seven, one and six. All of those things are swirling around. And then we even have secondary stuff, like... Is there anything we know, like secondary stuff, like we know Strongheart, Von Zeke's Scythe, and Professor Mikotoba, who's Sato's father, all knew each other. We've got Wilson being dead, Dr. Wilson. Why? Don't know. We've got all the stuff with uh, Gregson, who's now getting transferred to heck in France. Why? Seems like a cover-up for whatever was leaked in case number five, which embarrassed the British government. Still don't know why. Whew. Let me tell you. I did not actually read that. The victim who disappeared from the experimentation stage and the Mr. Osmond appeared moments later are the same person. Okay, I mean, that's not... No. <laughs> no. 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 And also, how can you analyze that? You can't, because you don't you don't know where the other body went. Twice don't blame your hair genetics on me. Fine. I'll continue to blame it on my mother, like everyone else. Twice recent events prove that the English government doesn't need help embarrassing themselves. Yeah, but this proves that they were doing it throughout history, which we also already knew. But this is a new embarrassment. So, it's exciting. Fingerprints at the scene make that evident. Eh. 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 Fingerprints can easily be left earlier. Yeah, I mean, the government doesn't need, the royalty doesn't need any help. I'm pretty sure Prince Harry just released a book talking uh, exclusively about his penis. Mm. Is what it is. Maybe not exclusively. Heavily. I mean, it's not like I'm any better, I just think it's all funny. Um, Bonnie moved from one place... Nah, it's a wax dummy. Wax. I don't know how the wax people have fingerprints. That seems a little too detailed, even for me. Uh, oof. I cut this one up? It looks the same, you weirdo. I think I just had a near-death experience. That was a near-breath experience. That's it. Is this... Is that all I get from this? I didn't actually get any evidence. Are there such impertinent Easterners around? How terrible. Alright, well, she is an unpleasant individual. Well, 
Um, I don't know where to go next. We have technically been everywhere. Um, unless we can present... Oh, we're not allowed to present. Okay, no, no presents allowed. It's past Christmas time. Got it. Let's work our way back up. We've got a couple places to present to. I'm just going to double check to make sure that I don't have a, a detective hiding anywhere. out of the area um, but we did get a business card stuff on the ground that we missed. Or at least something that we'll take a closer look at, like the burns, but... I don't know. <clears throat> well, let's look around down here again. Um, mostly at this, I assume. I don't know if examining the, uh, no, that won't change anything. Um, are we allowed to look up here yet? I feel like it's important. Like, the key to it feels, of this case, feels here-ish. He was going to say it wasn't by studying at all. Which, you know, I means same. Um, we could present the picture as well. Just in case. Nope. Okay. Unhelpful. Moving on. Um, I mean... Not helpful. We should also, I guess, look at everything from a certain angle and see if we've got anything new. I mean, not that part. Like, this one... stuff to look at after all. Honestly, if it cracked there, it feels like he should have been alive.
like, that's where he stands, not where the... Hmm. Also, is there anything on the back of this? Yes, there's oil. Is that helpful? If it's French oil, I mean, I still think... Wax? all I need there. Uh, maybe we hope Sholmes is back? Because, uh, I don't know. Ugh. Do I represent this to him? Not that. Uh, present that. Okay, nothing there. Uh, hmm. Now that I notice that there's a bit of machine oil, can I present it to Gina? The dog could sniff it. Sniff, sniff. I only know A to E. <laughs> oh, actually it is. Wait, did I really guess this? Don can sniff, sniff? Save us. Also, I feel like we shouldn't be the ones <laughs> trying to arrest this man. Or at least put him in tournament. Because that seems... I don't... I guess I have a sword that I don't know how to use. I like Azuma. Is his name actually... His name is Kazuma, sorry. Because that's also the family name of the main character in Yakuza. <laughs> and um, it's mixing me up. Gonna be me who gets it in the neck. It'll be the boss. Oh, Gregson. Hmm. 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 God, I had a heck of a work day, including getting pulled in for a meeting. Oh. Like, during my friend's PhD defense. So I was like, oof. Cool. And it wasn't just, like, my boss, so I couldn't be like, hey, can you just, like, give me a half hour? Oh, oh. Well, let's go follow him. Alright, 
Sholm's time. Yeah, I assume that he'll be at Madame to Spells. It's just a bunch of people with a bunch of random nonsense. It's first three months of the uh, year always like this. Just rough. But we're hanging in there. The worst part is I don't even get to know my bonus until like March from last year. I think you'll find that's temporary Waxworth himself. Wait, he found the Waxwork? Then why do you have the 200 pounds hanging on your... Is it just for... for cachet now? Status? We are... we are... we are gonna disturb though. We are going to disturb a lot. Hello. You might find he's quite nearby, actually. It is I. The world-famous great detective and waxwork. Herlock Sholmes. <laughs> she fainted. <laughs> My most humble apology. My dear madam, allow me to make amends by offering you a tasty free deduction at some point. Alright. What a steal. Case is largely solved. Not completely. Are you trying to figure out, like, who stole it? Let's partake of a pie, proverbial or otherwise. Mm, bittersweet pie. Stomach rumble echoed around the whole museum. Largely solved. Negotiated with the culprit. Are you familiar with the so-called telephone? Negotiated terms and got it returned, but how much was it? Culprit had always intended to return the stolen waxwork in any event. The ransom demand was necessary to avoid unwanted suspicion regarding the true motive of stealing the waxwork. A 
The fact I must ask you to keep from Madame to spells at all costs. A hungry young Iris awaits my return to Baker Street after all. Yes. Like, what the heck's going on? No, I need to know more. Like, who the perpetrator was, but... Also, I'd like to see the waxwork itself. Sure though. Also, hey, did you lie about my best friend's death? Also, you completely ruined my joke about how he died to a kitten, and that is unforgivable. I've been telling people that for a year in London. It's my best story out in the pubs. Last winter, you said my friend died the very next day. He apparently didn't. Told us it was murder and you examined the body. Wherein lies the problem? Uh, we met him earlier today. You're quite sure? Is that, I think so. Wearing some sort of mask and was apparently suffering from amnesia, but yes, I'm quite sure it was Kazuma Sama. You must have known at the time, Mr. Schultz, that he wasn't actually dead. Well, I can only assume I was swept up in the murderous atmosphere of the moment. But the fellow wasn't dead at all. <laughs> Priceless! Uh, I don't suppose that performance would pass muster, would it? No. sholm has got a lot of stuff to answer for. Great detectives are wont to lie. It will serve you well to remember that. Yeah, I know. Because you're still covering up the Baskervilles. Tomorrow in court you'll find yourself on the threshold of a very great mystery. For now I'm afraid that is all I can say. Great. Super helpful. Seems like he's faced exactly zero consequences for this great lie, but I'm guessing that'll bite him with the Baskervilles because it probably ties into Wilson's death. And that would be Iris's father, and oh, ooh, that's gonna be awkward. You're right, Mr. Schultz. Ah, yes, forgive me. Very interesting, that's very interesting indeed. Is Drebber also tied to all of this? Oh, and then there's the heckin' Reaper situation, which we have no idea about. It's not Barok. Some people say it's the ghost of his dead brother. There's so many mysteries here. Show me the waxwork. Oh, 
Okay, you cannot... <laughs> I'm not paying you five... This isn't your exhibit. Alright, alright. The price is a very reasonable five shillings. I think it's well worth it. Come on. Show me... Show me the money. Who's it gonna look like? What's it gonna look like? Our dead person? Or what? Is it gonna look like Enoch Drebber? No, no diddling detectives. <laughs> this 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 one didn't translate over correctly. <laughs> No fiddling or diddling. Come on. Show me the money. Please. Uh, it seems to be missing something. Like his, his noggin? Now that I've looked a little more closely, we've paid good money to see an exhibit that's clearly incomplete. No, not the great diddling to <laughs> Guys, stop! The question is, is that supposed to be the professor, or is the guy on the left supposed to be the professor? I'm just gonna assume it's the guy on the left. Zoinks. Uh, let's look at his butt. Hell yeah. Oh darn, we looked at the shovel. I was really hoping. No, no. Shovels are for digging. Spades. You've been through this. It's a shovel. No, no, no. Although, we haven't considered trowels. We allowed ourselves to be distracted. <laughs> Bury the hatchet. You're right, though. What was he doing in the graveyard? It's a real mystery what the serial killer was doing in the graveyard. Okay, camera. Took the camera. Of 
Good to know. Let's look at his... No. Uh, face, perhaps? Interesting. This man is the subject of your present hunt, I believe. Yes, that's, that's right. Is Enoch Drebber also... And also, why does the conflict behind him happen? Okay. Okay. It's, I said that. I said largely salt. strange about this room. Well, the displays are supposed to depict real events, are they not? Indeed they are. As terrifying as they are, the scenes in the other exhibits are believable. This one, what, back from the dead? Okay, educate me, please. Talk to me, boss. Took the lives of five victims, everyone being either a member of the aristocracy or royalty. All were attacked by an enormous hunting hound. Okay, well, we've connected one mystery, in that the Hound of the Baskervilles is the Professor Killings. They had their throats ripped from their bodies. And the convict that was in the... Case number seven, the Clouded Kokoro, had the dog tags and collar with him. Professor was tried in a closed court and his identity is a mystery. Naturally, he was found guilty and summarily sentenced to death by hanging. He was buried in a grave at Lowgate Cemetery, which joins the rear of the prison where she had been held. However, that was not the end of the affair. The very night he was buried, the con convicted man came back to life. He clawed his way out of the ground and emerged into the moonlit graveyard. Enoch Drebber was the one witness? Why? Ten years ago, the convicted professor, having been gibbeted and buried, emerged from his grave in the dead of night. The sole witness to that unimaginable scene was Enoch Drebber. 
From appearances, I would say he was about 20 years old at the time. His hair went completely white in 10 years? Oh man, he must be an engineer. Scared out of his wits, young driver ran to a nearby police station. Terror of what he'd seen is said to have turned his hair white overnight. Okay, that'll do it too. Yeah. The following few days, story of what he'd seen was on every front page. Though, if he's the sole witness and he's a charlatan, I just don't... not sure I'd buy it. Professor's acts of terror threw London's upper classes into complete panic ten years ago. It was a great scandal. The very highest levels of society. And since the killer's identity was never made public, rumors abounded. After all, no killer had ever before systematically employed a dog as a weapon of murder. But in time, of course, the rumors abated. So too did talk of the shocking witness account of the convict who came back to life. It was forgotten, dismissed as a dubious ghost story. Posterous parlor tale. Police investigated the grave, published their findings. The convict's body was found to be buried exactly where it had been following the execution. So Drever lied. But. Hmm. Hmm. Until, unless he's dying his hair white, or he's my uncle, who did go white by like 30. And I'm not sure I believe it. Oh, right, I need to examine this and look at the, the photo. There is no plate. It's been removed. Yeah, that checks out. So is the head just a guess, or is this head going to appear and be somebody we know? Um, okay, so there was no plate. Click on every- oh, There's some blood there. given up on having a watch. Father tells the time by the rumblings of his stomach now. <laughs> Alright. We'll ask Holmes about this. Sorry. Holmes. My bad. No. No, I want it. Ah, oh, geez. We... Each time you show it to me, it will cost you five shillings. That's fair. Otherwise, I have nothing to add. Okay, nothing about that. Um, nothing 
the Ozma. Once infiltrated his criminal organization in order to investigate the man and his activities, but he saw through my disguise instantly. What do you say? Whoever saw such a tall old lady? <laughs> My special disguise hasn't seen the light of day again since that humiliation. <laughs> Mrs. Minicle is retired. Okay. Uh, anything else here? Don't want to miss anything. I guess we're examining this in a little more detail now. I do, okay. I just zoomed in on his next stump, but yeah, okay. Number one through nine. Unable to find peace, he reemerged as a headless ghost from the grave. Be returned. <laughs> Something caught inside the jacket. Piece of broken glass. I've got I've got some ideas. Let's hold them up to a light. See which one holds its shape. This was a bad metaphor. Why would the grass for the crystal tower be lodged inside the jacket? Truly a mystery. Is that it? Early in cart, we established Kinesis experiment was a trick. Frank glass there. Now, oh, Scythe's just being stubborn about that. Or is it something else? as a white sword, if you're not careful. Still some flash powder from six months ago. Oh, God! Please, we understand. Put down the gun.
I know my place. In the exhibit over there. Oh dear, someone's feeling sorry for himself. Well, seems like there's a copy of it here. doesn't make a lot of sense. Fire Emblem Three Houses oh, was Oh god. I was just looking up how long Fire Emblem Engage was gonna be. Okay, it doesn't seem that long compared to like working our way through Yeah, that's fine. 26 chapters. The classic amount, actually. Though I think Radiant Dawn had like 40. Works for me. Is he allergic? Any sign of the engineer, Inspector? No. That's just him furrowing his brow. Um... Thanks for giving us the chance to investigate. It's very least. Did I have a cat just come back? Nope, I'm just crazy. Cool. If you're open to snoop around in here, I'd get cracking. Lord Van Zeeks and the forensic investigation team are on their way here as we speak. Well, I do see the bright red quiver. You know, Sholmes. They take even less kindly to great detectives than they do lawyers. Very droll, Gregson. Very droll indeed. Alright, zippity doo. Let's start with this. More of a support theory that it was, in fact, the engineer. But why? Why? Uh, this weird, conspicuous, st uh, trophy. Impressive back massage. Hmm. It's Royal Society Trophy for Excellence in Science. No higher honor. Good enough. And Trevor's got a lot of stuff up around. He's not gonna let that one go, is he? It's curious though. Expect such an important trophy to be proudly on display somewhere, not cast aside haphazardly. Hmm. Hmm. 
strange stuff. Okay, well, let's take a peek at the main line piece here. I'm not allowed to look at that. Oh, okay, we totally are. <laughs> Those don't seem to be holding back too much. Hollow inside, no working parts. Or devices of deception. Look up. No, I'm not super sure why I needed to do that. How about this locked blue door over here? Locksmith, okay. With permission. I could have it lock open in less than a minute. Well, you don't have permission. No one's giving it to you. Let's go get him. And you also, Toby. Let's go get him. Okay, that's a bomb. That's a bomb. Bomb. Bomb in the center. There's a... There's a bomb. Footprints on the ceiling, everything's upside down. Why is no one looking at the bomb? Set up blueprints. There would have been no need to muck about trying to investigate all that scrap metal. Oh, yeah, there's a bomb. Oh, look, there's still a bomb. Guys, there's a bomb. Please, take the bomb. Oh, I don't care about observing. There's a big orange bomb in the center. Investigate it thoroughly. Yeah, I know. How about we start with the center there? Yeah, that one right there. You seem unperturbed. Why is no one scared of this? Have none of these people seen Bugs Bunny cartoons? <laughs> Stop tossing it around like it's a hot potato. That, 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 that's a, surely that's a time bomb. Mm. 
Well, you know, it's a bomb that uh, blows up when it, it's time. Not a time bomb. It's just a regular bomb. <laughs> Times when I consider my lot most unfair, for I'm fated never to know how it feels to flounder as you do when a puzzle presents itself. But I've learned to accept the hardships that come with being a great detective, Mrs. Sato. Oh no, not the great deduction. Well, let's uh let's finish this. Heard it is furniture is from Drebber. Small device is genuine. But We're all gonna die. I guess it wouldn't be an investigation section without a grand deduction, but, uh... Plain to see. This room is in complete disarray. The bed, the table, the chairs, the lamp, everything is upside down. Almost as if every item in the room had been happily... something something... placed upright before falling straight down onto the floor. Okay, I see the safe code <laughs> on there. Gravity. Technology has at last succeeded in freeing us from the great pull of the Earth. Gravity in the room was reversed and then restored to normality. Hmm. Inverted furniture clearly reveals the truth about the part gravity played in the whole business. Who was incredulous at first. However, my conviction in my analysis was cemented when I observed this. An anti-gravity device almost identical to one that featured in a dream of mine only the other day. <laughs> oh, okay. That controls when the gravitational direction will switch. Alright, grumpy cat. Come on. And smooth and spiffy. Oh! Oh! There you go. You got a little chunkster, you know what? Right? Not really. You actually look very svelte and skinny, and I'm so proud of you for controlling yourself from meowing too much when we don't feed you uh, the treats every single day. You fat tub of lard. Okay, so gravity flipped because of this device. I have witnessed precisely the scene in a dream I once had when I fell out of bed. Okay. Mm. Will he ever get a deduction right? In a great deduction, you are gonna knock that over, kitty. Like, fully right. He says cryptic things, and sometimes they're definitely correct, but any grand deduction has been completely biffed every single time. How are their footprints on the ceiling? 
The reason there are footprints on the ceiling is because of the nearby skylight. Of course, Jarvis' aim was singular, to escape. However, there's but one way into this room, accepting the skylight, that is. Whoa! By inverting the gravity in here, Jarvis was able to fall conveniently to the ceiling and make his escape via the other inaccessible skylight. And those footprints behind on the way. Gravity reversal is sudden. Wouldn't the driver have fallen up to the ceiling rather violently? Hmm. <laughs> Falling up is both scientifically and philosophically a rather interesting concept, I feel, but the man was cornered with nowhere to run, so escape from the skylight was his only option. Yeah, the rope. I remember the rope, yep. Yeah. Which intended a destination, a better tool than this rope. Wasn't there a ladder in the other room? Like a ladder would have been better. That's just me though. Also, why did the man write the safe combo on the bottom of his chair? I mean, I appreciate it for my own puzzle solving capabilities, but you know, sheesh. Gregson doesn't seem impressed. Inspector Lestrade, not impressed. Sasato, probably extremely impressed. She's spellbound. Okay. Yeah. Expect nothing less. You're destined to be troubled by just one thing for the rest of your life. Yeah. Is that actually possible, though? Anti-gravity device. Well, I'd say other than its current scientific knowledge at the turn of the 20th century. It's no more possible than instantaneous kinesis. When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's great. Let's do the... Come on. Just, 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 just get it. My original was more clumsy. I just came up with the exact phrasing. Objection! Sato helping. Hi. Rope was on the floor. It would have been on the ceiling. Strings inevitably unravel in the end. I think you'll find so do the ropes. Must be a great feeling clearing some of your backlog. Absolutely fantastic when I finish a game like this. Especially one that's been like, I wouldn't say troubling. It's been hounding us for a year or two, and like three or four years past that, because I knew about these games and I couldn't play them. We do have a bit of a backlog uh, of the the old JRPGs, because I uh, got a lot of them for the open house, so I will be excited to add another one to the currently playing list. But we don't have like that many games on the backlog. I've got a ton of games that are like, hmm, I could buy this in the future, right? Like, like Pentiment or Chain Echoes or something. But I really only have a few games on Steam right now that I want to play on stream and want to play in general. And then, um, I've got a lot of games on the Switch that I need to play, but that's 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 for. JRPG January, and then it, it, it goes to about JRPG Jarch to finish Xenoblade Chronicles, <laughs> so... But it does... From the from when I started the stream, oof, we were, like, buried under two avalanches, an earthquake, and two sinkholes. And quicksand. Doesn't look like it all fell down straight to the floor.
When do I get to correct him? Okay. <laughs> it's been a while. Biggest problem with JRPGs to take a million hours? Yep. And Xenoblade takes longer than that. Like, a million and twenty-five, right? I'm also working through Dragon Quest V right now on my 3DS. Uh, in little fits and spurts. So, you know, we're working on it. And there's other stuff that I, it's it's like the, I would like to play this at some point list, right? The Monster Hunter Rises and Iceborns of the world. Maybe Pokemon, uh... I mean, the large safe is bolted down. Take two. Oh god, do I have to listen to this again? Stop, stop. Yeah, I know, I know. I was wrong. I was incorrect. I was incorrect. Obvious exception, yada yada yada. Oh, right. <laughs> the bookshelves. Or the stove? All inverted furniture. Oh, wait, there's a vase here. Take that! The vase. That's not what I clicked on, I clicked on the vase! Oh. Yeah, and like. Then there's games that are gonna come out this year that. We'll have to worry about, but we stay we stay pretty on par with releases that I really want to play, and then every once in a while we jump back into the backlogs of my wish list that I just keep on hand, where I'm like, oh, this game still exists, maybe we should try that one. But no, it feels real good to knock out like one or two giant ones or like five or six smaller ones Take that. please okay we're through we've breached it upon my word you've surpassed yourself by completely turning my argument on its head Well, it appears at first glance all the furniture in the room is upside down. The gravity in this room was never inverted at all! My deepest sympathies for your loss. <laughs> show must go on. Let's continue with our deductions. I'm still pretty sure this is a time bomb, guys.
someone deliberately turned over every piece of furniture, which might sound obvious, but leaves one mystery unsolved. Why would anyone choose to do this? Naturally, there's an explanation. The reason is because of the anti gravity. Okay, it's a time bomb. Maybe he was looking for the combination. He had forgotten which piece of furniture he wrote it on. I think that makes sense. Also, again, I still think this is a time bomb. Like, still a time bomb. God, and then there's like all the... And then I'm still catching up on like a bunch of retro games that just keep getting added to, like the Silver Star story, and Little Lufia 2, and... Oh, boy. There's always adding more. People are making their own games, more games, and I want to make my own game. And... But, yeah, the backlog right now, in terms of, like, combined stream and games I own that I need to play. Probably like a dozen-ish right now, which isn't, isn't terrible. Alright, well, let's open the safe then and see what's in it. But I believe I've proved my point. <laughs> Alright, he couldn't remember a safe combo. Fair enough. I mean, how bad is your backlog? You know? There's no backlog judgment here. I've seen a lot worse. So, so, so much worse. So much simpler in the days when gravity could be reversed. Uh, I mean, I assume it's because of the balloon, honestly. Oh, gosh. There's a shoe. Take that! Was he just tossing it at the balloon and missing? Just testing stuff out? Just 
assume the loom here is a model. Strong possibility something may be concealed inside of it. Oh, he's throwing the shoe to try to grab it. Ooh, is there something inside he wanted? So we use this instead. Take that! However, we did get, uh, we did, we did take that. So. The head of the professor. So he was the one who stole the dummy. Which, I mean, at this point, it was pretty much confirmed, but still. I, again, like, still worried about the time bomb. We should probably toss it into the safe. linked. Though I'm not sure why. I mean, it was used in the... It was used in the the, the name, the, 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 the deception, but... <sighs> Ooh, this is, this is good news. I like this. Did he close himself in the safe? It's a safe. I think he's hiding in the safe. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure he's suffocating. <laughs> uh. I don't know how he was supposed to get out. I do like this, this little addendum to the music. Again, still pretty worried it's a bomb.
Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Was he like all machine now? question. Why do you do dances? Personally, I would advise that you deactivate my little parcel first. For, of course, to the time bomb. <laughs> it's right there in the middle of the, the place. Yeah, that, that one. I don't like that. I don't like that smile very much. Just toss it in the safe. My dear fellows, that was a close shave. The resemblance to an anti-gravity device is really quite startling, I must say. Here. You found me, haven't you? No need to screw me down any further. Everything in here is precisely what it seems. I don't like his smile. It feels like a horror movie. Like the smile's too- it feels like Smile, the horror movie. God, eventually they're gonna run out of titles for horror movies, and I'll just- this reminds me of this. This is a spooky this. Always a title. Gosh, a condition that's handed down? That's hereditary. It's spooky. Boom. Why did those lambs go silent? Boom. Horror movie. It's impossible to miss. Can't remember that thing. Horror movie. No words, just tightly squeezed chips. Clearly must have screwed loose those. I couldn't remember the combination for the safe. <gasps> and another one loose, couldn't even remember on which piece of furniture I'd written it down. Hope Dex is in the skylight. Sadly, the rope was too short. So I wanted to search for the combination to open the safe. Well, I had no intention of being nailed by the police. Okay. Got a death wish in. Hiding right beside a ticking time bomb. So when you suppose I chose to hide inside the safe? It's no ordinary safe. It's specially designed. Dynamite explosion wouldn't leave a scratch on it. The safe was the only safe place. Precisely. Climb inside, you want to be able to get out again. I invite you to look more closely. Ah, there's an indoor handle as well. It was intended to blow this place to smithers in any case. Just wasn't expecting uninvited guests to come along and screw up my plans. Do you, do you mean to say you're planning to blow us all up? No, no. That was unforeseen. Most people run, you see, when they see a ticking time bomb at their feet. Calculate the time required for retreat to a safe distance, set the device accordingly. But your seemingly endless discourse near through a spanner in the works. Gosh, 
Witch. What day is it? Friday the 13th. Horror movie. Boy, X is the aggressive letter of the alphabet. Horror movie. Pearls Before Swine. Horror movie. Well, the first part. Favorite class in D&D? Barbarian. Horror movie. Do I like haunted houses? Nope. Oh, blah. Horror movie. It's the head of the professor. Yeah. Clad in a mask locked so strong I'm unable to open it safely to reveal the killer's identity. I don't think Madame to Spells knows exactly what the professor looked like, considering it seems like it was a situation where nobody knew. Dr. Scythe again. I don't think Gregson cares anymore, considering he's going to be transferred. Okay, and they also know each other, so... It's just too many connections. Checking this machine next door, it's causing such a sour expression on your face. You're quite misguided. It's really nothing more than a shell. Oh, but of course. We'll show ourselves the door. So you haven't softened at all. Alright. Let's leave this place in the doctor's capable hands. Kicked out. Say one thing before I head off. If it wasn't for this Laura and his companions, we'd never have found this place. The whole workshop would have been blown to bits. Quite right, of course. Did disarm the time bomb, didn't you? So he destroyed it so that there's no way of... No, oh, there's no way of figuring this out. Well, I mean, there will be, but... Oh, God. That's not helpful at all. Pleasant as they were on the first day of trial. Probably not. Thank you. 
pulled the covers off, shook me, poked both cheeks, punched me, and kicked me from the bed. Then a boiling cup <laughs> tea on her face. And then I finally was awake. This is my victory. Gregson. Anyway, here's the paperwork you asked for. Ah, I took the liberty of requesting it yesterday. A feeling it may prove useful. I had to jump through to get this brawn out of the archives. It's the professor's autopsy report. Okay. I think we need to look at that, like, immediately, because I didn't think it would have much relevance to today's case. Gregson's back to growing on me again. Maybe it's just the theme, I'm not sure, but he's growing on me again. And now he's going to hack in Paris, so... What does it matter? Kazuma's going to be in this trial as well, but I'm not sure for what purpose, other than intimidation. Which, to be honest, probably works pretty well. he's going to want his sword back. I feel so much more confident at it with it at my side. I don't think there's been a prosecutor with like a legal assistant with them. Unless you count uh, Black Black something? Black Blackheart? Simon Black? Black Quill. Black, Black Quill. He had a hawk. Not sure that counts. Godot had cups of coffee, they don't, I guess, count. Probably not alive. Wow. Incredibly handy. Instructed my assistant to attend to ensure the smooth running of the trial. Ooh, the refreshments. The way he holds himself, the way he moves. It couldn't be anyone else. The more confident she is, the less confident I am. That'd be brutal if not. It already was brutal. I had recovered.
same journey? Same... Looks like it. To take a man's life with a conjuring trick is against the magician's code, also the law. This is my day. Okay, thanks. Appreciate that, Gramps. Back in my day, juries had to walk uphill both ways to get to the correct conclusion. Report yesterday at the Great Exhibition Grounds the evidence of primary importance in this case. The machine, which was installed on the stage, was deliberately destroyed in an explosion affected by an unknown person or persons. You know it was the engineer, but okay. Oh, sorry, this reminds me. I need to look at the report of the autopsy. Actually, I should probably look at, like, everything here now before it gets too weird. Yes, that's true, but I'm not sure that warrants quite so much anger. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, anything else? It doesn't seem like it, though that seems like we could do something about it. Okay, I don't think there's anything else here, so that's fine. That's good. Um, a little concerned about missing anything, so I'm just clicking on everything before we start this trial to add any possible info. Obviously not everything has that, but cannot be too careful. I'm not really sure if that's necessary, though. I'm gonna click on it, though. If you're gonna let me click on it, I will click on it. I will push all the buttons forever and ever. It's all video games are pushing buttons until fun things happen. Yeah, alright. Pseudonym, the professor, redacted. Death by hanging, confirmed at midnight, 17th of June. Courtney Stevens. Courtney Stevens. Alright, I don't know how that helps me at all. Cool picture. It does show that the grates drop out, though. Which is exactly what we were hoping to prove. Well, that's what I was hoping to prove, at least. Hi! Are you a goofy cat? who gets upset when we clip their toenails and then bites at their toenails for 10 minutes and looks miserable? Is that you? I think it is. This will become a very different trial. <laughs> 
Yeah, the proof is in the pudding, and we're we're all out of pudding. Authenticity of the machine is now always obscured, so we can't rely on it being a fraud to prove it. Hughes accepts responsibility for his part in the events that transpired. He acknowledges Osmond died as a result of an accident caused by his machine's malfunction. However, unbeknownst to the professor, he was being deliberately deceived by a pair of very clever fraudsters. That would be Drebble, Drebber, Drebler, Osmond. Hello Oh God, close the door to you. Hmm. Excuse me. Establish the unequivocal innocence of the defendant. Prosecution calls the engineer Drebber to the stand. Occupation, hard to pin down, I would say. I only case you're currently being investigated in connection with another case. The theft of a waxwork model, is it? Extraordinary sound music. That has no bearing on this trial, I assure you. Cleave it from your mind. Hmm. Familiar with the public experiment carried out at the Great Exhibition some days ago? I would hope so, because you were the engineer. check out the blueprints that he almost burned but didn't <laughs> I can't deal with his like cabbage patch nonsense the experiment was bona fide objection Starting with Trevor. I met the young professor approximately one year ago through Mr. Asman's introduction. He provided me the blueprints on constructing the machine to his precise specifications. It was no trick. If the whole show was a fraud, it would have required a body double. Tell me, did the victim have a twin? All spectators saw the birdcage appear above their heads, then crash head first into the crystal town. Terrible accident, I grant you. Perhaps the science on which the machine was built was flawed somehow? Oh boy. That goes without saying, surely. 
give the impression that something has moved when in reality it hasn't. It's a basic conjuring principle. Deception cannot be achieved without substituting the original with a fake at some point in the performance. But would I be right in saying you haven't managed to establish anything along those lines? Stanley, prosecution already confirmed that Asmod has no twin siblings. I'm not sure that super matters, but... Yesterday's proceedings brought the true nature of your past exploits to light, Mr. Trevor. I'm sure the trophy is supposed to be your, like, big gotcha moment, though. I may have sold the secrets of some deceptive wiles to sniveling talentless scientists in the past. The explosion was an unfortunate accident, or of course a deliberate act of murder carried out by misuse of the science. going on here. Didn't I? I thought I had the blueprints. They were partially burned. I'm gonna start pressing. Oops. That's it. No, that's not. I just wanted to start from that point. I wasn't saying he had a twin. Well, not a living one, at least. Up a bath or anything again. Oh, it didn't crash head first. Got it. Yep. We know because we did our research beforehand on all the items. Well, it was the unveiling of the machine I had labored over for many months, saw it clearly with my own eyes. Birdcage plummeting headfirst into the tower. Did you come by that information? Even an infernal recluse like me reads the newspapers. According to the reports, two injuries were apparent on the victim's body.
Mm. Four frogs. Da, 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 da. Still don't know which entry is the fatal one. But there were two entries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't fall head first. It's very easy to deny, actually. No, oh, no, I pressed the wrong button. Oh god, big L. Big L. The biggest L's. Yeah, as soon as there's an alternative for attention, there you go. I'm just a just a second hand cat owner, you know that? It's screwed up. base of the bird cage, not the top. Well, that's the opposite of where they should be. Well, I mean, reconcile these two facts to accept there were two bird cages in play that day, which were at some point switched. It wasn't a scientific experiment, but an elaborate piece of stage trickery. Grog! The base one then would have been dropped below, and that still leaves the head first one. Alright, well. Oh. If we examine the facts, there's only one logical conclusion we can Damage on the base clearly indicates a crash tail first. Oh, nope, I don't think so. I don't think so. Everyone said I fell head first. One more point the defense appears to have forgotten. Obviously, it wasn't a trick, a certain truth very plainly demonstrates. Hmm. 
Oh boy. Alright. Well, continue on out, I suppose. This is clearly took place because there's nowhere else 30 feet high for the bird cage to have fallen. I mean that we know that's not true. But I don't know <sighs> which one. Oh, this one. Objection! But <laughs> it's right there! Why oh, was that not it? Okay, we'll press it, I guess. The picture is right there. Could easily see. Escape <laughs> sometimes, I tell you. Alright, we'll press on this, see if anything happens. But, I mean, there's obviously a balloon, and we have a picture for it. Was that not to do 60 feet? Point of impact on the tower is 30 feet up. That difference of 30 feet is therefore the total distance the bird cage fell. There's no other location from which the cage could have fallen that distance if it didn't drop out of the sky. Uh, I don't know. Thirty feet. I mean, except for the heckin' balloons. Also, there's this. Objection. But I don't think we're there yet either. I'm gonna waste all of my defenses here because. There's obviously other places it could have fallen from. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That apparently wasn't it, even though you can definitely see... This is my only other... Okay, I'm gonna try to claim that it fell from the other part of the Crystal Tower, I assume. Indicate the place, yeah, just come on, just, just come on now. We know where it is. It's up here. Oh, it's right here. Take that! I did it on accident, but also that was my second plant idea, and then they said it was wrong, so, you know, such is life, say lovey.
I wish we could actually examine the stage, honestly. Once again, my lord, this all points to the fact there is not one bird cage, Objection. but two. Actually, I do have some evidence about that. See that little drop skis there? Defense calls for the space below the stage to be investigated immediately. Mr. Trevor, it was you who built the Kinesis machine, which means that it was you who built the two bird cages that were used to carry out this deception. Ugh. Sorry, uh ugh. a finger like that. It's the end of your wild assertions. The prosecution would like to crush the defense's argument slowly but surely. The argument fails to hold water on two counts. Firstly, before and after the experiment, this witness went nowhere near the kinesis machine. Be sure. Everyone on our side of the has tested that. I mean, that's fine. An opportunity to switch the orange pair of birds. The man who disappeared from the stage and the man who crashed on the tower are one and the same. Forensic investigation team support is unequivocal. But how can you argue that? How can you argue that they, they, that they were the same? You don't have evidence. Other than there are fingerprints on both locations. Obviously there were fingerprints already set on the stage. And the fingerprints make sense to be at the actual point of death. <sighs> Contract which Mr. Driver entered with a victim reads is to receive 30% of all remun rem remun remunerations? Isn't it remunerations? Nah, I don't know. English is such a foreign language to me. There was a provision. Only uphold this right on condition both contracting parties are alive. Neither opportunity nor motive, you say. Well, you may say that, but watch me BS my way through another uh, event. The whole whatever, whatever they called the heckin' <sighs> jury summation examination. That's it.
Um, all right, we got another one to look at. Enter a contract, an October on labor materials, national sewer and all that. Mr. Drubber is to receive 30% of all remunerations. Um, now is that his signature? Do I still, do I not have the, uh, I don't have the business card anymore, so that was the only thing I could think of. It's a fake signature or something, I don't know. There were two bird cages. Prosecution is unable to deny that, so I'm sure you're on the right lines. Just need to figure out how. Thanks, Asada. Life is so much easier with you here. Though technically, we weren't really doing anything until you got here. We barely got through the first day. But that was the first time we practiced in six months. I'm just talking about the machine I built and said my reputation is defiled. Oh, that smile, man. Objection! Culprit, huh? It's inconceivable you had no hand in the events that transpired. So if circumstances mean it's impossible you could have carried out the crime yourself, it points to the fact that someone else was involved. An accomplice? I don't, I don't know about this. I presume you're prepared for what's to come? And you're accusing not only this witness, but someone else of the most serious of crimes. If these accusations turn out to be false, then make no mistake. The prosecution will demand an equally serious punishment for your slander. Hmm. Do I? I don't know if I should. Don't know if he had an accomplice or if he's even really the culprit. We never back down. Mistakes are for cowards. Never admit it. Always go in. Horrors report. It's not a possibility. They were switched, but that inconsistency itself is a clue. I'm talking about Scythe? Identify this alleged accomplice by name. Who do you claim to have been Mr. Drebber's accomplice? I... Courtney Scythe. Wait, what was her name beforehand? One second. I can't see it. It was Courtney something else. It wasn't Scythe at the time. But she was the name on the autopsy. You know what? I didn't like her. Take that. Didn't like her. Surely fear doesn't bind your tongue now. It's a little late for that. Well, 
A lot of waves being made. Could very well turn every single person in this courtroom against me. Enemy always appears larger than life, but you'll appear exactly the same to the enemy. I am not so sure. When something doesn't go my way, I physically stagger back into the wall and then fall down dead sweat. The person who colluded with Mr. Drubber in order to carry out this wicked crime is Scotland Yard's coroner, Dr. Courtney Scythe. Oh boy. It's fine. Um, it's fine. Just, just accused. It's fine. Courtney Stevens at the time. Interesting. Anyways, still her. The head of the fit in the corner conducted the autopsy. That's me. We know there were two bird cages, so who could have carried out the switch to complete the illusion? The accident happened in front of a huge crowd of spectators. The area was immediately sealed off, and everyone, police officers included, were banished to make way for the fit. When else could the switch have occurred? It can only have been in that team's presence. Central the court determines exactly what happened following the incident. The defense demands Dr. Scythe be summoned to the witness stand at once to testify. Oh boy. I thought she'd be more important in the later cases. Um, not in this one. I'm going very well. There's no better dead room worker out there. I'm dare Oh, no. Get out of here. My weird friend's imagination appears to be wilder than the East End at night. With the recklessness of your accusation aside, there's another grave problem with your argument. One which the prosecution demands you address at once. Who do you claim acted as the victim's doppelganger? Bird cage containing the body of the victim was exchanged for another. That cage must also have contained a body. A wax dummy. And if she did the autopsy... Kind of makes sense. That feels like the missing connection. A new reveal is one of those achieved. Uh, I, I mean, I don't think I can name someone. Name someone. I don't think it was the body. I don't think I can do anything at the moment. Maybe tomorrow? Oh, well, no, I guess we had to do this. People procrastinate, lose everything in the end. Oh my gosh, that's a little over the top. I don't think it was a person, it was wax. And it was the professor. Filibustering? No, I never watched Arthur as a kid. It wasn't out for 80 years. Body double inside the second birdcage was this guy. Take that! You know the victim, Mr. Osmond, was in the birdcage that was situated inside the kinesis machine on stage. Couldn't have been inside the second birdcage. Instead, that contained something else. It's been described as a body double, which is what fell from the sky and crashed into the crystal tower. That body double inside the second birdcage was, in fact... Sorry. You ready for this? I am not. I'm about to pee my pants. But thanks. 
Anyways, it was a wax body double. Wax figure. How did that get there already? How did no? How did it get there? <laughs> did uh, did Herlock bust it in? Up your eyes and look into mine, my Nipponese friend. Now tell me, what are you playing at? Well, as the court will observe, this is a waxwork model. Oop. Model of an infamous London murderer from ten years ago. The Objection! We started by indicting the leader of the fit as an accomplice in this crime. Now you've moved on to indicting waxworks. Yep, that's about the size of it. Why? And why this waxwork? It's nothing like the victim. In fact, it hardly resemble him less. What possible justification can you give? Well, if you want to know why, ask Mr. Drever. Just days before Professor Harebrain performed his public demonstration, Drebber abducted this model from men to spells. Two days after the incident, he returned it to the museum. First I couldn't see why he would have stolen the waxwork and then given it back again, but now the reason is clear. He took it so he could put it inside the second birdcage as a body double for Mr. Oz. Objection! Still don't know how they got the body up to the top of the crystal tower. Well, second floor of the crystal tower. The witness fabricated this vast machine with the intention of deceiving some wretched scientists. He did so in collusion with the country's finest coroner on a public stage in front of a vast audience. And that to effect the deception, he used a waxwork model that in no way resembles the victim. Well, I found a piece of the crystal tower inside of it. I'm just, just, just saying. Just letting you know. Objection! I would like to object to you leading the jury. Well, you know, they were a pretty good jury, overall. You know, weren't too bad, but now I gotta set them straight again. <sighs> it's bound to happen. Guilty. 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 Corn. It's fine. Time for the summation examination. Never be in a car. Okay, well, you know what? We'll just we'll just not do that at all. Not dealing with you. Nothing to do with the corn. Well, actually, no rigorous proof that this waxwork was ever inside the bird cage. Oh, I have something for you too. I don't know how a 10 year old got on this jury, but other than that, the introduction of this waxwork model has polarized opinion.
can't explain why at the moment, but I feel as though there's a specific reason why it was used. Hand me this model. Something far more significant, whether or not it looks like the victim. Okay. We're not gonna solve the professor's murders again, are we? I think that's gonna be the next case or two. Would you assume that? Well, quite simply, because that unsettling swing there's no relationship with the woman, does he? Not that we know of yet. It wouldn't be delightfully romantic if they somehow had a mutual interest. Romantic? <laughs> the original slash fic. Well, not slash fic. Official fanfic. As soon as we have a wolf connection, she'll be the first to know. I mean, we have a connection. She proud. She did the autopsy in the original. Um, also, we've definitely got something here. Claim the instantaneous kinesis was a trick. Well, there's one more and one way to pull a rabbit out of a hat, isn't there? I grant you, given that this cage appeared from amidst a explosion. No need to use reinforcement. Waxwork can use culprit at least with decency to make it look like the victim. Better head to bed. No worries, Pyro. Have a good night, buddy. I'm gonna make claim of the waxwork being a bird cage, and you can give us some evidence. Like that. It's just not I have I ha do have evidence. I firmly believe it's only wise to trust men in white coats, so given your jet black outfit, I don't mind admitting to a sense of trepidation. This nice shard of glass. piece of broken glass found inside the jacket of the waxwork matches the glass of the crystal tower. Well, as I said, only trust men in white coats as a rule. However, when the reasoning is sound, it's fair to say color shouldn't come into it. Thanks. Hold it! Do you want evidence specifically... Oh, no, actually, we're going to go into the corn. Colonel Cobb? <laughs> Picked him on the way into town. Proper nibbler he is. Don't 
talking about your cob of corn, pointing you in the right direction morally and ethically. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no more. No more. No, no, no. You can stop. You can stop. You can stop. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Perhaps it's akin to fortune telling with flower petals like people do back home. Amazing. Alright, super unhelpful. Keep pressing. I mean, I don't like the police officer, but I get the feeling that we're going to get good info on the connection between Scythe and the Waxwork. Hold it! And the Copper Lands. Copper's discretion to bend the rules sometimes when needs must. What's wrong with that? I've been working at the yard for 40 odd years. That's even more than I thought. <laughs> Only had a Metropolitan Police Force service in town for 70 years, you know. Of course, times have changed. Public didn't trust coppers back when they started. It was rough. I had to fight crime, and we had to fight to win the public's trust as well. And when we did. Forensic science was in its infancy, too, even more so than it is now. She spearheaded the revolution. Ten years ago, there was still a youngish Bobby on the beat. Youngish! I want you to let slip that her last name was Stevens ten years ago. Thank you. She told me that holding the gun. Nope. Nope. Full of them. Alright. Loud and clear. Those murders on Solar Pond Street was caught in two days ago. That's real policing for you. That's really not relevant to this case, is it? You're wrong there. Because it was Dr. Scythe in charge of examining the bodies, and it was evidence arising from her work that went to the arrest of the scoundrel responsible. Someone's gotta let slip that her name is Stevens. Yeah, and I can't actually Hold it! present Lisa <sighs> what? Obviously I was such as myself cannot appear on stage usually work in close proximity to our audiences, so we perform our great magic in parks and street corners and the like. Police use any excuse to like our oh, There we go, there's something. Revolver Ocelot. Let's let's slow down. Got confused because I heard you look like don't look anything like the man. Well, let's move on. I was really wondering if you had something you wanted to add in response to what Journey number three just said. Clearly you do. Back in my day, back in the good old days, it wasn't like this. Oh. We worked our fingers to the bone during the public's trust we did. And my Jove, we earned it. People respected us back then. <laughs> no one would have called a coroner into question in them days. Coroner's report was the hallmark of an investigation done right. And Dr. Courtney Stevens put her into it. Mm -hmm. Hold it! There we go. Sorry, got a bit carried away there. Stevens is the maiden name of Dr. Scythe.
Yeah, I think I've seen that there too. I think you could change your statement to include that name. Okay, I'm gonna pit this one against this one because there is a connection. Objection. And then I guess I'll connect uh, four to five because that's good evidence that something happened here. Oh golly, oh gosh. Alright, let me present. Thank you. Certain autopsy report from a decade ago. From the autopsy of the person portrayed in the life's work, the killer known as the Prof had a solid 1.0 on Rate My Professor. Terrible homework deadlines. Absolutely killer schedule. Sure, there was a weird relationship in regards to this case, but I'm, I'm not sure. Explore this further. Okay, well, in that case, we're going to pit this against evidence. Objection! If you could put down your corn for a moment, please. I don't understand much besides Colonel Cobb, to be honest. <laughs> All 
All right. Kaboom. And listen to Colonel Cobb, juror number five. We take those. <laughs> Back on the trial. I still don't know why there's a significance. I don't get it. You should know that you're on the brink of opening Pandora's box. I'm just trying to get to the bottom of a case. Thank you very much. I should summon the new witness and prepare her for taking the stand. And then also please prepare the other witness, aka the coroner. Thank you. I mean, if the coroner hadn't been so heckin' obvious with the conclusion that it had to be the same person. I feel like I would have caught on. I would have been like, oh, it must have been Madame Two Spells the whole time. Who'd have thunk? The knight errant himself. I've been watching from the gallery, Mr. Sholmes. I've been on the edge of my seat the entire time. Courtroom trials are fascinating affairs, as a spectator at least. You've been enjoying yourself. I have to ask. What on earth is going on? It makes no sense. Well, quite honestly, I don't get it either. I am pretty lost. So we'll uh, we'll see how this goes. At least we get a refresh. start reopening the professor, which means we're reopening Hound of the Baskervilles. Imagine me with the shrewd Mr. Reaper failed to foresee that kick in the teeth. An extraordinary move on your part, my dear fellow, to throw that in front of the man. Make it sound deliberate. Can't help feeling that this professor case is really very puzzling. Yeah, a guy who resurrected? Drebber, Scythe, Van Zeeks, everyone in the trial is linked to the case somehow. More than you know. 
It's gotta be Hound of the Baskervilles. Is what they'd call it. But it's weird that they would make it about... Unless we're gonna go to the end of this and then there would be like, Oh, the per it was Professor Baskerville. Like, Whoa. That's my best guess. Also, hi. Gonna... Gonna indict you for murder. Sorry. But I, I, I do think... Do you think something's gone wrong? To think it's been ten years. Ten years in the land wielding my scalp. Also, wait, also, why do you need 500 scalpels a month? That's still in the back of my mind. I don't know if that was supposed to be a joke throw. There's not a lot of joke throwaways, but that, that one's pretty weird. I'm hoping you'll take the stand and tell the truth about what really happened. That certainly won't be possible. Lord Manzeeks won't be summoning me as a witness. Strongheart has forbidden it. Pandora's box you were warned about is the Professor case, but please don't make the mistake of thinking you'll get any information about it out of me. Oh no! Attempting to hide the truth is cowardice. I always fought crime in the way I see fit. I have no regrets, none at all. And that's all I came here to s <sighs> Screw you too! Heckin' like 440 haircut. Sure, when the trial resumes, the meaning will become all too apparent whether you like it to or not. Yeah, it feels like I'm just getting I'm I'm the bullet and the gun fires and I just get shot at to fix problems and to create new ones. If in the course of the trial this afternoon you perceive even a shadow of doubt about the truth, don't let it out of your sight. Pursue it like a dog with a bone. Dog with a bone! the better end, you understand. Do not falter whatever may come to pass. Alright. I understand. Thanks. Good. I shall make myself scarce, then. Purchased a bar of caramel earlier. Why was there a picture of that caramel? There's still two more cases after this. Time for the final chapter, then. Well. Of this case, maybe. Lots more beyond that, still. If the ransom note will be presented as evidence and the handwriting can be analyzed. I 
I really like to spells design. I'm worried that face is gonna be really familiar and I just don't know why. It's underneath the mask. But at the same time, how would the wax museum know what it was? Anyways. Name and occupation for the court, please. Is that... Make, oh, she's making uh, a herlock model. The new exhibit must open very soon. Stolen. First, we believe it been kidnapped. But now the ransom seems to have just been a diversion. Part of my odious personages exhibit. The tests say what is evident. Mr. Asma does not resemble a professor at all. Perhaps their faces are very similar. Suggesting we should see now the damasked visage of the professor. I have here the key, but it is strictly forbidden to open the lock. I don't know what face you've carved onto your fancy figure beneath that mask. But clearly it won't be that of the actual killer. Indeed, the man's identity was never made public, after all. Tell me nobody knows, though. Nobody? Nobody at all? I don't believe you. I don't, I don't believe you. Can't demolish. Seem you are unaware of the Tispel's principles. Family Dispels has always prided itself on sculpting its model. Every detail, including the visage, is fashioned with complete fidelity. Along our principles. Yeah, I learned a lot about Madame Tussauds. So just... <laughs> they really got famous during the French Revolution. That's crazy. Now they make people that look more alive than uh, the weird robots that run most of our tech companies. So. How times be a-changing. We stop at nothing to obtain a faithful replica of our subjects. Ooh, to obtain a truly lifelike representation of the subject, and it has been my family's secret for generations. Tell the true visage of the killer. This is ludicrous. It's out of the question. Must have spread terror throughout Great Britain. As a result, the Madame Dispel special exhibit remains extremely popular even today. Killer emerging from his own grave. A sight to behold. You should come. Formal testament. No, I really... I want to see the face. Special exhibit is based on a rumor. 
Shock Society of London. Precedent of the Vistas were taken directly from the corpse in accordance with the spells, family principles. Listed the aid of the gravedigger and created a mold for the head in the cemetery just before the internment. I hid myself until he gave me a signal. I was there for a very long time that night. As Don approached, I was very worried I could be discovered. Wasn't he resurrected that night, though? The man sanctions. I will do all that's necessary to achieve the true resemblance my family is celebrated for. Nobody else knew. Only the gravedigger. What harm did it do, huh? So you truly saw it. In the face of that monster. Naturally. I was aware at the time his identity was a secret. But the spells would not be dispels. We did not insist on absolute fidelity in our sculptures. I don't believe this. I myself have seen the special exhibit. Madam. A truly blood-curdling scene in which the murderer is emerging from his own grave. The scene it depicts was a subject of many rumors in London ten years ago. You have a newspaper from- thank you, I guess. Ooh. Detailed account what happened. An eyewitness who saw it, aka Drebber. Public enjoy absurdity, Monsieur. So I reproduced the scene as carefully as possible in my museum. It's going to be really awkward if that's his face. Because that means the professor was just wandering around for... <sighs> ten years beyond that, not doing anything other than being a criminal. Uh, I don't know. I'm missing something. Show me that. Uh, well, I sure do see. Uh, Mr. Odie Osman signed in the corner there. Which means he's connected to this too. <sighs> Was he trying to silence everyone that possibly knew about it? <sighs> I don't know. Surely, that's illegal. It seemed the proprietors of this repository of novelties was blinded by monetary greed. It had nothing to do with money. The man is part of London's criminal history. That's why I had to sculpt him. To record this history. As the raison de told I can't speak French. Not even a little bit. I can't even speak Spanish, and that's the class I took. I make up words in English. You gotta stop throwing these foreign languages at me. My identity is a national secret. Yeah, I know. Now that the truth about the special exhibit has been revealed, it must perhaps close. I swallow your entire museum if you don't tread very carefully, madam. That could be another interesting chapter in the history of my family, I think, don't you? Ten years ago, I ended Fresser's execution. You took a wax impression of his face from the corpse. If it was indeed a corpse. Hold it! Like, if Don was approaching before you left, it feels like the 
resurrection just didn't happen. It's a difficulty capturing the subject's form correctly. The mouth of the cadaver fell open. I had some problems with the chin. Oh. Ooh. His muscles were relaxing. Consequently, his chin would not align itself correctly. Ugh. 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 Normal circumstance, I'm assistant, but I was alone. And I think you were like 16. Insane. When I take the impression of a cadaver, I always wait until three hours after death. Rigor mortis, yeah, okay, sure, makes sense. Education. Well, that time the mouth falls open. Very difficult to do that. All right, so we're fine. Be significant. <sighs> God. But I'm not sure if that's the right testimony or not. Execution took place on the 17th of June, which had the earliest sunrise of the year. 4.40 in the morning. That really is early. Very little time, finish my work in half hours. Necessary to complete the impression and bury the body before daybreak. Someone discovered me there. It would have been a catastrophe, so I had to hurry. Hmm. Might be significant. I'm not really sure. Sometimes at four in the morning. Does she modify all of them at the same time? Resurrected on the night, right? In light of the foul demon's execution, Professor clawed free of the earth. Gunshot rang out suddenly from behind. The bullet pierced the chest of the resurrected man's chest, whose breath then stilled once more. <sighs> That's weird. Though I think it's gonna be used more for the Odi Osman.
I'm just having her add everything to it. She created a mold before. I'm gonna just press on all five, and then we'll see. Didn't realize he was then immediately shot by somebody. There goes my uh, theory of he's still alive somehow. Though I still don't know why Drebber was there in the first place. To know if you found a bullet hole in him, honestly. Something is described as a rumor it doesn't necessarily mean that it's entirely made up. I believe that often rumors contain elements of the truth. It's not possible for the dead to come back to life. Huh? Ten years ago, I was there in the cemetery after the criminal known as the professor was killed by Hayley. I took a wax. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So I can assure you the man was dead. that I have no idea. Okay, so what are we looking at here? I 
and left as soon as the corpse was interred. It just, it just seems weird. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we just, we pause on this, and then we'll, uh, we'll come back. We'll come back to this. I'll ponder this in the next couple of days. We'll finish off the case on Thursday, start case number four. We'll not finish case number four, but we finished off like, uh, we'll finish off like a case and a half, and that's not too bad. And then we've got Fire Emblem the very next day, so... Hey, life is good. Uh, but until next time, hey, if you'd like to leave a follow or just come back, excuse me, hang out any other time you want. But until next time, toodles.